Great. <laughs> Hello, folks. It's the Pod Squad with Kathy Morrison, Delina Massey, Wendy Card, and yours truly, George Oliver. And we are uh, here for New Renown's podcast for June 10th, 2021. This is episode 187. Yay! And we are connecting you with people, places, and happenings in New Bern and the surrounding areas. We want you to join the conversation by commenting on this live stream on New Bern Now's Facebook page. It's right there on New Bern Now's Facebook page. And we want to know what you think. And that's how we'll learn about each other. And we've got a lot of good things happening today. But first, first, what do we have? We have a question. First. A question. Oh. It's a contest. Ah. The, the, the question to answer the contest and win a prize is, where is the city of New Bern's community garden located? Oh. You need the address, so put the address in the link, and if there's more than one guesses, then um, you'll win, you'll, you'll be entered to win a prize, so. I know where to find it. I know the address. <laughs> and I'm going to answer the question without giving away the answer you're looking for. How about that? Yeah, okay. I I, I need right. to get ready to set mute you. <laughs> yeah. Was, the good news is we we operate this podcast on a 15 second delay, so uh, you can stop me, <laughs> right, Wendy? Yeah, 15 seconds. Um, so if you go to www.facebook.com/newbernownc, you will find the community garden. Wendy, it looks like you were there yesterday. Yeah. So so. Somebody that's watching this right now may even see that as. But you were. didn't put the but you didn't put the physical address on it, so it doesn't I, give away the the answer to the question. But I did want to point out that I didn't know about this garden until I saw your post yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, cool! A community a community garden." Yeah, uh, isn't that awesome? What are they growing there, Wendy? Oh my gosh! Uh, you'd have, you'd have to ask a gardener. Uh oh. Did we <laughs> oh we no, lost? you're sorry. We lost your audio. We, we turned George off. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Here your, we go. Your video. Your video. So the problem is I'm doing this on an iPad and uh, my phone <laughs> started ringing. So I had to hit decline. <laughs> so I apologize if, if the person that was calling me is watching this right now. I'm sorry, but I'm on a very important call. <laughs> very important. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah talking about gardening okay um okay the the community garden is they have all kinds of stuff um i found out about it because when i posted our in the weeds that we do every saturday uh laura and i started this garden but we don't have like lots of land so we have container you know things in containers and and things are growing like the little zucchini just popped up the other day and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, cool. I got a zucchini. So, <laughs> so that, that's not a garden compared to the New Bern, uh, city of New Bern's community gardens. So Nancy Donahue from the Parks and Rec called me when she read the article and she says, Wendy, she says, you need to come to the community garden and, and get a plot. And I'm like, a plot? wow I didn't know you can get a plot at the community garden that's cool so I need to find out where that's at and I finally made it yesterday I've been meaning to go there for a couple of weeks so yeah did you have a do you have a plot no no it was locked up <laughs> but um I just wanted to see it and went by uh parks and rec but I know they're busy working on all kinds of stuff so they I think they were in a conference or something so you got I went to it I went to a graduation party uh, with our friends, the Minsters, and um, Dr. Chris Minster was taking me around their yard, and he has all this fruit growing, and it inspired me that I need to start actually growing things that serve a purpose. So he has this one tree. It is a plum tree, mm -hmm. but it has four types of plums. So they because they're all grafted. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> and what he was telling me, and I think it's true. Um, having tasted these things, but I've never really eaten a truly ripe plum because when you get them in the store, they had to be, you know, plucked yeah. before they're really ready. But a tree ripened plum is like the best fruit ever. Mm -hmm. And he's got like golden raspberries, which I did not know existed. Uh, <laughs> now cannot live without. So he has those, and he had all kinds of goby berries and all kinds of crazy stuff I never heard of that that grows just fine right here in Newburgh. So, so cool. 
No, he told me that I should, um, I've missed the spring planting season. He said, look for the fall, but he gave me, um, he said the name of the nursery he's used is rain tree nursery online where you can find these hybrid fruit trees. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of excited about that, about having fruit grow right in your yard. So in about 10 years or so, you can all come by and <laughs> check out our orchard. <laughs> Takes a while to mature. Huh? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I have to tell you, you remember we were talking about mulberry, the mulberry tree in my yes. backyard? Okay. The very next day, there was a storm and boom, a huge part of the tree came down on my fence and uh i mean it wasn't like n nothing major like when people get no major damage from storms so i'm not i don't mean to complain but i i was talking about that that mulberry tree and i don't think it liked me talking about it because it, <laughs> it came on top of the bird feeder <laughs> so, did it have they have mulberries on it when you no, you, that, when it fell? Oh. yeah, they're all they they came and went and uh, it was last month was the last one that dropped. So yeah, I just thought it was bizarre that the very next day, like I never talk about it, and then the next day it crashes. So I mean, it's mm. still standing it, but I I need a tree service. So if you're out there watching right now, <laughs> if you know a tree service that's um, that you recommend, please put their information in this live stream. Yeah. And just want to mention uh, Pinecone Home and Garden, local farm and garden, uh, Newburn Farm and Garden. So they have nurseries and Gary's nursery. So at least here in Newburn. All right. What else? Find something fun and interesting to plant and watch it grow. Yeah. And Kathy's a, a grower too. You, no, you have, a, I, you have I, flowers, right? I cross my fingers and stick it in the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> and it, it, it usually does, you know, it, it does fine. With all this rain we've been having, things are growing like crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely. All over the place. I beat down my daisies. So my daisies, instead of standing upright, are now standing up like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and before we before we went live, we talked about how that baby doll behind you has grown into a three year old doll, which is, a, is I don't I don't think that's just the sun in the water. <clears throat> I think that's eating something that we don't we don't know. I don't know. Up here in the, I'm up here in the frog, so Lord knows what goes on up in the air. Right. <laughs> Boy, Help so me. go ahead, Win. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say with lots of stuff going on, really, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who came out and helped with the, uh, with the history quest last week. And we had a great turnout, had 54 teams sign up. That's great. Uh, yeah. And folks were having a great time, having a great time. And so we're already talking about next one, but, yeah. uh, but you know, they were, they were enjoying it. They were having a good time with the clues, having a good time with families. We had lots of families with kids, with elementary age kids. Um, and they were having fun. So we want to say thank you to everybody who had a hand in that. And, uh, you know, we'll work on the next. We're working on, we're working on setting up our whole year for what we're going to do for, for, you know, lectures and things like that. So we hope we'll have that information for you pretty soon. All right. Well, I, I, I have to say thank you to you and Mickey and everyone, and Claudia, all, everyone at the Historical Society, because we were following a couple of teams and they were having a blast and they were learning about stuff that, I mean, they drive, they, they said it was Walt Bellamy Park was one place. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know, they drove by, I don't know how many times mm -hmm. they didn't even know it existed. So, but you're bringing history to life. It's cool. <laughs> it's fun way to learn about history. It's not like, well, yeah. we, were, we were very pleased and, uh, you know, what really neat is seeing folks have a good time. And, yes and, and that's what so that's what's cool and george you make people have a good time every day or at least <laughs> when you have let's see you've got your uh walk-in bathtub improv shows and you have your small town news podcast you have the bonafides you have the new bird civic theater all the stuff that's going on there uh Ban joy every morning. Oh my gosh, you just totally made my day this morning. I 
I started out with just an upside down day and it was just, when I heard that, I'm like, everything's going to be awesome today. So thank you for that. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. In the morning to get all that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helps to, to be a vampire. Vampires don't need sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it yeah. truly is band joy. So thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. We've uh, we've had a busy week at our house. Um, Abigail has four friends over that have been with us since Saturday, and they're staying till Monday. They're all recent graduates of the University of North Carolina School of the Arts high school program. And they are participating in the Sax Bradbury show at New Brunswick Civic oh. Theater this year. And um, Abigail's directing it again. It's the same show that they worked on last year, but weren't able to stage because of COVID. And so some of the kids that uh, were involved last year aren't able to be involved this year. And so she needed some more help. And um, four of her friends um, have decided to be in it, which means they're all here this week in rehearsals. They're doing a boot camp style rehearsal where every day from eight to four, they're working it out and figuring it out and using the, the theater. Um, and then at four, Sankova comes in to work on their show. The open dress for that's tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tickets are available tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So it's wonderful seeing the theater get used like that. We've been so grateful to have Abigail's buddies in town, mm -hmm. uh, really get to know her friends from up there. And um, it's, it's a neat uh, synergy between our local teens and then some other teens that have come from across the state to help with this show. So that'll go up in July. Uh, for we so if you get tickets to that um, that'll be two weekends in July and we got Sankofa in June and then we've got the the kids um, camp the theater camp will be going this year um, late June and uh, that's all full I think there's a wait list probably but that's been full for a little while and uh, yeah there's just a lot going on at the theater uh, we've got a show coming in another show coming in uh, August September uh, November and then Christmas Carol in, in December. So the what theater's happened? wide open again. Yeah. yeah. What, really what is neat about we is the pieces they're doing were all written by teens. Am I, am I correct on that? Yes. Last year they did a contest, a writing contest, mm -hmm. and, and invited submissions from teens all around the country. And they picked the ones they thought would work best. And so they're, they're staging those, many for the first time. These are authors that have never had their work produced before. Um, some local, some not local. And then the, um, they have one musical piece that's written by Lynn manuel Miranda mm -hmm. called 21 Chump Street. And it's about a 21 minute musical. <laughs> um, and it's about, um, it's about high school. It's about an undercover police officer who is embedded in a high school. Um, and so it's really interesting. That's where the chump comes in. Uh, I guess it's a, you know, it's a play on 21 Jump Street. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's really, really good. And they're having a lot of fun doing it. And that's coming up in July, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. July 9th? That's right. Yeah. Arts are alive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, That's things right. are just blowing up around here. So, mm -hmm. and uh, Angelina says Sankofa opens tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Heart. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's wonderful. Good. All right. In my I know Angelina's been working really hard on that. Also, Neil Oliver and lots of other people. It's going to be really cool. So, if you don't have tickets to that, go ahead and get your tickets um, and help celebrate this. Uh, the season that we're in. So it's a, all part of the, it's a kickoff of the Juneteenth celebration in Newburn. So I hope to see a lot of people out there. Yes. All right. And guess who's in the waiting room? Who, who is in the green room? <laughs> Talina's well, not. Where's Talina at? I don't know. In the green room, I see Roland and the home sales team. Is that Roland Bowen? I don't Let's know. Is see. the whole team coming? Oh, that'd be fun. We should do that sometime. <laughs> We should just do a, a whole hour of real estate or we can do that on another day. So yeah. Okay, there he is. Are we catching him off guard? I, let's <laughs> see, I'm getting here, I think. Hey! There it is. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> Technology is a beautiful thing when it works, <laughs> when we know how to use it. So, it, it hey guys. Like, hey, how are you? I'm doing well, hope y'all are. It's Rowan, you got your, your gaming headset on there. It looks like you're about to play Fortnite or something, maybe. Yeah, well, I've never played Fortnite, George, but uh, <laughs> this, I think I live in this thing the, the past 15 months with our real estate market the way it's Yeah, been, so, exactly, uh, exactly. That's right. <laughs> well, now are things really moving and moving? We are seeing things moving and moving. You know, I think George made a good point just in listening to the show about how things are – 
starting to happen again in our town. And I'm, I mean, anybody that's been downtown over the past few weeks just sees the hustle and bustle is back. Uh, and it's, yep. it's good to see. And, you know, really for the real estate market, we've been hustling and bustling since probably early April of last year. Um, it seems like the world froze for a couple of weeks right in the middle of March. And then everybody figured out that they didn't have to live in these big cities. And there was wonderful things such as Zoom, where you could stay at home and be at work kind of all at the same time. And Amazon delivers everywhere. So who needs a big mall? <laughs> so uh, it's been, and it's been good for our real estate market. I mean, if you look at average prices year over year, they've jumped $45,000 for New Bern. Wow. Um, wow. And, and people are, you know, we say those numbers and people are, you hear, well, we've seen this before, you know, 2008, you know, 2009, the bubble, everybody remembers the, the recession that we went through, but I, I'm telling people the market's different now. This isn't the same market that we had in 2008 uh, on multiple levels and for multiple reasons. Uh, with that jump in equity, you know, if you bought your house more than a year ago, you have equity in your house now. Uh, the lenders now compared to 2008. In 2008, you could walk into a, your local lending institution and they had stated assets, stated income loans. So basically, I just had to sign a paper saying, hey, I make this and I have this much in savings or I own this much. And the bank didn't have to verify it. You just had to sign something saying you were telling the truth. Well, that, that's worth as good as the paper it's written on. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the lending behind the mortgages over the past five or six years, the, since the federal government came out with the Dodd-Frank Act, I think in October 1st of 2015 is when it started, just put the mortgage lenders under a lot more scrutiny. Uh, there's a lot more separation between the appra from the appraisers and the lenders and the realtors. We're not allowed to really talk to each other as much anymore. Um, so it, it's made the lending a lot more uh, uh, scrutinized to make sure we're not giving out bad loans to people. And, and then really economics 101 is supply and demand. Uh, and that's our biggest issue right now. There's 166 houses for sale right now with a New Bern, Trent Woods, or Bridgeton address. Mm. Uh, you figured 10 years, 15 years ago, we were, we were averaging around 12, 1300 homes in that same area. Wow. Uh, of those 166 houses for sale, 56 of them are new construction. So they're not even going to be ready until January, February of next year. So then there's 110 homes actively for sale in the greater New Bern area between 59000 and $4 million. Wow. Uh, and and, and wow. With, the de with the demand of people trying to come here, that's, that's where the market is different because the builders just can't build fast enough to keep up with the demand. And fortunately and unfortunately, depending upon which side of the coin you're on, New Bern's been discovered. So we have a lot of people coming here. This, a few months ago, we had 16 different states represented under contract just for our team where people were coming from out of the area. Uh, so it's, it's a good time to be in real estate. Uh, you know, small town guy that grew up on the back of farms, kind of like, let's lock the door now and keep them all out. The real estate agent guy <laughs> that's sitting here is kind of like, let it grow, let it grow. Uh, uh, but, you know, and, and I think this is really just the beginning with the interstate opening up our area. Uh, you know, we got to make sure our politicians can get from Raleigh to the beach houses quicker, but it's going to really be good for, for our area of growth and bringing in industry as it opens up the port in Moorhead city and what that interstate is going to do. Obviously road construction is going to be no fun for a, a couple of years as they're building interstate 42 is through the James city area. Mm -hmm. uh, however, once it's completed and you get that interstate running, where it's easier to get from the port back west, uh, you'll start seeing that port utilized a lot more, uh, and it's just going to open up industry. So, new, hang on, guys. I would just tell you the next five to ten years, we're going to see some real growth. Uh, and even if our market slows down, since we've been discovered, our prices really aren't going back down. Really, uh, there's not huh. a there, there's not a wait for the market to get better. It's, I don't see our prices going back down. And again, economics 101, I mean, supply and demand. 
you have a much larger demand of hunt people coming to our area than we have homes on the ground. Um, so it, it, it yeah. is what it is really, you know, so, and it's a good thing. You know, if you're trying to sell, I have a lot of people over the past year, we tell them what their house is worth and they're like, really? And it's like, but now where are you moving to? You know, right. it's not an issue of getting the, in a lot of cases, it's not an issue of getting your house sold for what you want. Um, though we are still seeing some houses, from 2018 that experienced flooding during Florence, some people are still a little hesitant of those. Uh, but overall, I mean, the market is the market's strong right now. Uh, and with interest rates at 2.75, 3%, I mean, that's cheap money for 30 years. Uh, that, I mean, the rate of inflation will go up faster than that. So it, we're seeing cash buyers come to town that have sold their homes and thinking about paying cash for property. And if they're able to do that, they go get loans instead because, hey, I can keep my money invested in the mark, real, the, the stock market and stuff and at least be making 5%. I'm only paying 3% on the money I'm borrowing. So I'm, I'm coming out 2% to the better. Uh, are you finding that folks are more serious when they're set out to buy a house? Four years ago or five years ago, people would say, yeah, I'll buy that house. I'll sign on the line and then and then I'll, I'll tell you, I'm going to buy your house. And then three weeks later, they say, no, I don't want it. Um, well, okay. it, it's interesting you say that. It's interesting you say that, Kathy. I was looking, you know, with the way the market's been, uh, kind of a feeding frenzy, I guess you would say at time. I mean, I've had houses that we put on and within two, three, four days, we've had 12, 13, 15 offers on properties wow. uh and wow. to to the point where you have to tell the seller hey we can only take a cash offer at this point because it's never going to appraise for this price because yeah. the appraisers work six months in the rears and we're talking about today's market and mm -hmm. that's just the way the way it is i mean that's the way the market's always been they always work in the past as realtors we're always like well we're talking about today's market not six months ago's mm -hmm. market and i would say i think six months ago we were actually seeing more of a quote unquote feeding frenzy than we are now demand is still much higher than supply however instead of getting eight offers on that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house you put on the market you're only getting five um some of that is partially absorption some of those people have finally bought their house mm -hmm. uh, i think buyers some buyers are getting worn out uh, i've made 10 offers on houses at at least asking price or more and i still haven't been able to buy a house uh i'll just you know i'm i quit i'm, I'm gonna go back and just keep renting where i'm at so uh so i think you're seeing some of that starting to level off but again demand still much higher than supply uh, but kathy to answer your question you know there's been 757 homes or 757 closings so far this year in New Bern, both wow. residential and mm -hmm. commercial. But we've had 975 properties go under contract, uh, according to the MLS. So mm -hmm. they, that, that's, about, that's 220 properties that went under contract and for mm -hmm. some reason whatsoever fell apart. I mean, the contract plainly states that for any reason or no reason at all, a buyer can back away from a contract. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes I think it's buyer's remorse. Hey, I was competing against eight other offers. I got kind of caught up in the, mm -hmm. I want to win. Uh, and, and as a realtor, we try to safeguard the seller against that by getting some non-refundable monies put down. I mean, there's different ways you can help safeguard that. Uh, and inspections come back where people are scared of the inspections. Uh, financing falls apart because something wasn't properly disclosed or discovered in the credit report. Uh, so there's multiple reasons uh, why deals fall apart, but it, it isn't. People think, hey, we're selling all these houses. Well, some of them we have to sell two or three times to actually get them sold. Uh, and and yeah. that third or fourth time can be interesting after after it's falling apart for a couple of times for different mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, but I mean, the lack of inventory is interesting too, though. If you look at 2020, up until I got numbers until the end of May, we had sold 545 houses in New Bern, anything with a New Bern address. So wow. far this year, we've sold 757. So mm -hmm. we've sold over 200 more houses, even though there's less inventory. And in some ways that just means more, more properties are coming on the market, but they're also selling faster because I mean, mm -hmm. your median days on market right now, six days. My goodness. Wow. wow. Not long ago, <laughs> it was, you know, 45. 
Yeah. Right. Well, the average the average days right now is 39 days, yeah. but the median is mm-hmm. six. Uh, and, and I would tell you it was pulling the average up more. So it's probably some of that new construction because the builders are saying, hey, I can sell you this house. However, right now, all you're seeing is a piece of dirt uh, and I can't get you in that until January or February. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping my cost will stay the same because building costs as i mean i'm sure you guys have seen or know is just have also just gotten out of hand and i think we will see those numbers starting to pull back they have those have leveled off i was speaking with the builder today and he was saying it's been a couple weeks since they've had a increase in their lumber costs and they were getting increase a couple times a week a couple months ago well that's Uh, that's that's good good. Yeah. yeah that's really good so but the, the, from what their builders are hearing and expecting, they are expecting things to level off with those increasing prices and hopefully a pullback there. But I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in corporate America of lowering their prices once they raise them. But that's, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I do have real quick. I just want to mention um, a Kincaid and Purvis family dentistry. Hi, so many I should have worn my glasses. Exciting things happening in our beautiful town. And then Thea Kincaid. Hi, George. Hi, Wendy. Love seeing the hustle and bustle. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So pretty, pretty fun stuff. Uh, well, so, well, are you finding that you're spending more time? I mean, are you working 24 hours a day now with all this crazy going on? <laughs> or are you, are you having normal, normal office hours? Uh, Kathy, I've been selling real estate around here since 2003. I don't think there's any such thing as normal business hours <laughs> in, in my world. Uh, it, it's funny. I leave my office a few times a week and I'll tell my, some of my uh, admin that I'll, I'll be back after y'all go to bed because I'll typically be in the office a couple of nights a week after my kids go to bed. I put them down. I come back because typically at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, I don't have to worry about the phone ringing and dinging too much. Uh, and you can able to sit down. And, and sometimes it's necessary because, again, I got five offers I need to present. So it's easier to put them all together, send them to the seller, let them have a chance to look over them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't send them at night at nine o'clock because I don't want anybody not to sleep. Uh, but I'll put it, I'll put it together where it will go out to them in the morning. Uh, and it just some time. So, Kathy, answer your question. We're, we're still working a lot on the weekends because we're seeing a lot of people coming from out of town looking to buy, uh, have buyers that have their house under got their house under contract from upstate New York. They're coming in this weekend. So uh, we're still seeing, seeing the migration uh, that we've really seen since I've been in real estate around here. You, we've always seen people from the Northeast, but we've seen a lot more people coming more from the Western part of our country uh, hmm. moving, moving here. And uh, we, at one time I know I had three different people from California all under contract at the same time hmm. uh, back in August. Uh, and Roland, I, I know Nuber has been popping up on some of those magazine lists and things recently, mm-hmm. and I know that helps, but um, how much do you attribute to that versus just generally people wanting to be out of congested areas due to COVID and everything? I, George, that's always good PR. I mean, I think, mm-hmm. you know, we as a town do good at promoting that, hey, we've done that as well. Yeah. Uh, and we do hear about it. Typically, people have already identified Newburn in some case. I've never heard. Well, I did have somebody, they, the TV show Bones that used to come on. Mm-hmm. I had a lady say that she heard about Newburn on Bones. Like, that it's some, one, one of the shows. And so she started Googling what Newburn was. And that's how she ended up buying a house here. You, uh, I think Ted. Bones. I think Ted, Ted Peterson yeah. used to write for Bones. Um, and he has wit clothing downtown. Uh, so Maybe that's how they got in the show. Yeah. (laughs) Michael, Michael Peterson is Ted's brother. And he wrote for Kathy and Kathy Reichs, the author. Mm -hmm. So Michael Peterson, Ted and his uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peterson brought Kathy Reichs and Michael Peterson to town. They were at the Harrison Center. And for a book signing, oh my gosh, it was awesome because I'm a huge fan. So, so they they could have had uh, influence on your okay. clients. Okay, that's pretty that, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's what. But George, we do hear. We, we, I mean, I have heard from clients that, that hey, I saw you in Southern Living Magazine, but again, typically they were already 
I don't yeah. focus in a new burn, but it gave them a different perspective. And I tell people all the time, because we get clients that are, that come to new burn, it can be their first or second time to new burn. And we'll show them a few houses and they're still just figuring out the area. And the great thing about new burn is it sells itself. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, look guys, I get paid to sell our area. This is, this is part of my job. Go, go walk around downtown, talk to people, First of all, you got a better chance of meeting somebody from wherever you may be from than you will meet somebody from New Bern. So they were the new kid on the block not too long ago. And the people of our town are just, I mean, our community is just such a welcoming community to people and it helps sell itself, you know, and I tell you, don't just listen to me, go listen to what everybody else says, because I mean, there's nobody I don't think on, in this square, on these four squares that is actually born and raised in New Bern. Uh, well, I'm when we wrong, first moved to town, <laughs> Uh, Gray Wheeler was our agent and he'd been recommended by a buddy and, and he, he walked us around a bunch of places and then he took us to what I think was his go-to lunch spot. And it was Pollock street deli. And you could tell the people in there knew him and he ordered the same thing all the time. So if you don't mind, Roland, tell us your go-to spot in Newburn. If you've got one, you might have several, but what's a place you'd like to take people from out of town to kind of, I don't know, not to, not to close the deal, but you know, to give them a taste of, of what that might be like if they lived here. Well, I mean, I'm, I, w- I would have to say that would probably be the Chelsea if I was choosing that one spot, uh, yeah. just because obviously you can tell that with the history they have with there being an old pharmacy, you know, they yeah, have the, yeah. the murals on the, the wall, wall there. Yeah. And, and yeah. obviously it's a staple. Yeah. It's a staple here. Uh, yeah. So j- just to be downtown, that's, uh, and they have such an eclectic menu. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think the last people I had in from New Jersey, we ended up uh, at Beer Army eating burgers. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you can't really go wrong with any of our locally owned restaurants around well, here. Well, and that's true, too. That's uh, exactly so. right. A lot of good options. Yeah, a lot of good options. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it depends on it. Like, 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 you're an attorney, if I'm not mistaken, George. So, like, every yeah, answer, it depends, right? <laughs> you started to sound like a lawyer. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I got a question for Roland. Uh, have you seen any snakes lately? <laughs> no, but uh, I try not to look for them either. So, they may have seen me. Uh, I did have a time. I did have a time where I went to show a house and there was a snake wrapped around the door. And uh, I told the people I went to show them the house and they told me they'd wait in their car till I moved the snake. And uh, again, I didn't show them the house that day. They're still there. So yeah. I don't, yeah. do, I don't do snakes very well. I, I heard your show and I just, I, I laughed so hard. I just love that. That was so funny. So that was a great story. And that's why, that's why I brought it up. So yeah. Yeah. Are you still there? <laughs> Nope, you're muted. Un- unmute. There you are. Yeah, guys, for a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I had <laughs> to I say, back? I had to ask you. <laughs> yeah, no snakes. Uh, fortunately, no snakes. Saw a fox not too far away walking down a dock oh. the other day. Uh, he came across the dock, and I think we both scared each other. So. <laughs> wow. That's a beautiful sight, huh? Yeah. 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 And that's the great thing. I think uh, one of the things I enjoy about real estate, and HGTV's made a whole you know, 24 hour channel about it. It's just going to go get to see some of these different properties. I mean, you know, I've, I've sold a property for as cheap as $5,500 and I've sold million dollar properties. And I mean, it's just interesting to be able to walk in and, you know, just, just see houses. Cause you see int- very interesting things when you walk into people's houses. Uh, I mean, in all shapes, fashions and forms, I mean, some really neat stuff. Um, of, so we had a guy that lived here that won the Super Bowl in 1956 with the New York Giants, uh, helped him sell his house. Wow. Talk about just the stories and the memorabilia yeah. in people's houses yeah. uh, and, and just the relationships you build in this business is, is phenomenal that, because you do meet people from all walks of life. Yeah. Well, if folks want to get in touch with you and talk about real estate here in New Bern or anywhere, how do they do that? So uh, you can always reach me. Uh, my cell phone number is we are rolling in the home sales team. We are affiliated with Keller Williams, but we have our own team. Uh, my cell phone number is 252-259-6904. Uh, you can find us on our website, homesalesteamenc.com. Um, 
which is actually a new website. We've been real estate of New Bern forever, but uh, with this area growing so much, I didn't want to leave anybody out. Uh, so home sales team, enc.com, or you can call my office at 252-631-6787. Uh, and just check us out on Facebook. You can see us at open houses most weekends somewhere. Uh, we, 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 we still believe open houses work because they do. Uh, some realtors will tell you they don't, but I'll tell you, I got many things I'd rather be doing on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon than sitting in somebody's house, but that's not what I signed up for when I started real estate. So, uh, but yeah, we're always happy to help. Always. We love real estate. Happy to just have conversations. Uh, we give people free market analysis. If you're ever just curious of what your house is worth. And sometimes that's good information to make sure that your insurance is keeping up with what your house value is uh, for replacement costs and stuff like that. So uh, that's a yeah, great that's, tip. Wendy, I appreciate you yeah. the opportunity to be well, on here too. Hold on. So. Hold on real quick. Colleen Roberts says, hi, All Roland. Right. Not us, but hi, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? what? <laughs> hey, Colleen. I'm joking. She was in the oh, most epic, epic leadership craving class ever. So there you go. Uh, one more tip, um, Roland. You mentioned insurance. We're getting into hurricane season, and you know there's a period of time where there's no coverage after you get it. So there's a window. So everybody needs to be looking at that anyway. Make sure you got yeah, the coverage you that you need as we get into this area. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're paying cash, because with flood insurance, there's a 30 day window that from mm -hmm. the time you close uh, till it actually come if you get a new policy uh, until it becomes yep. effective, unless you assume the previous homeowner's policy and then it stays effective at all time. But I saw that's also George, good point, but it's also important just to make sure that as the public, if you're dealing with realtors and we got a lot of great realtors in our area. So, uh, but you just need to make sure, you know, you're talking with one that knows what they're talking about. So you don't end up uh, in a bad situation. So mm -hmm. good yeah. point, George. So, yeah. But guys, it's great being up here. I appreciate the invite. If I can ever join yeah. you, again, I'm always we, happy to. We love having you. This is your second time on, I think, but yeah, hopefully yeah. third time will be a term. And uh, Colleen says, yes, epic class. So <laughs> Hashtag epic <laughs> class. But yeah, it's always good yes. to see you rolling and and uh well, and Wendy, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, I know we've talked about this. Uh, I, I appreciate what you did downtown and the remembrance of the COVID patients uh, that had passed away in our area. Uh, that obviously touches close to home to me. And it was just, it was special just to know that people were doing that. So uh, well, just appreciate you, what you Roland. were doing with ringing yeah. the bell and stuff downtown. That was really cool. And so. I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, so, and uh unfortunately it's part of life right yeah so, yeah uh, so but guys uh didn't want to bring it down uh so you know, <laughs> just uh thank y'all for what y'all doing thank y'all for everything you do with the calendar and keeping everybody up to date with what's going on uh in new Bern and keep up the good work well thank you and have a wonderful Thanks, day Rowan. all yeah, right man. good Take seeing care. you see you care. guys bye right. bye, -bye. <laughs> all right i bet he is busy 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 yeah. Oh. Boy. Yeah. What have we got? Okay. There we go. And Carol is patiently waiting in the waiting room. Okay, good. All right, Carol. You wanna you wanna ask the contest again? Oh yeah, let yeah, reason? just real quick. Where is the city of New Bern's community garden located? We need an address, so if you put the address in this live stream during the show, not after, then you'll be eligible to win a prize. And that prize is a gift certificate to a very well-known local business. Lo very well-known and loved local business. So, all right. Mitchell Hardware. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to tell you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> At Mitchell Hardware. Their Mitchell initials Hardware. are Mitchell Hardware. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Got Winnie it. and Lindsay and your team, the family at Mitchell Hardware. Yes. So, okay. all right. Miss Carol, are you ready to come in? She's coming. And Carol was a, a longtime elementary school principal, and now she's busy helping with many, many different projects and things. And her most recent one is on this uh, African American heritage trail sign project and they're getting ready to dedicate that uh on june 10th june 19th there's carol okay awesome 
Hello, sweet Hello. lady. How are you? Hello. I'm Hello. nervous, but fine. Thank you. <laughs> oh, nothing nervous. You can walk circles around, run circle circles around us. Um, yeah. I mean, you're an actress. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> Gosh. Well, tell us what's happening with the uh, with the sign project. A lot. Uh, uh, it, 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 a while has but it is well worth it. We are just looking so much to June 19th for this dedication. We will present 16 signs. We'll be dedicated and unveiled during our ceremony. And uh, they tell about the history of African Americans here in New Bern. Mm -hmm. We have several sponsors who have been more than generous in helping to make this happen for us. And it includes the Dryborough Historic Neighborhood Association, uh, Swiss Bear of New Bern, the City of New Bern, Encore Interpretive Designs, and also the uh, New Bern Historical Society. So we are very excited about it. Uh, we had the leadership of Bernard George, which has been outstanding and awesome. Uh, he has just led all the way and the fruit of his work and our work as a community is going to be evident in the product. So we, we're very excited about it. Okay, real quick. Um, I, Theresa Lee is in. So can I bring, him, bring her in for the <laughs> conversation? Okay. You ready, Theresa? She's also part of the, this committee is, is a great committee and has worked for five years on this project. So I, I can, you know, it's a good reason they're excited about here. Here it comes for the dedication. All right. Let me see. Hey, lady. Lisa. Hello your head, there, how your are head, you? Your head's chopped off. There yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, maybe I need to back up. Maybe. There you yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> It's my green, that's what it is. <laughs> wow, I like it. Yes, so, yeah. Hello, so, everybody. Hello. So what are you looking forward to at, at the dedication coming up in, the, in this new sign project? Well, I, I, I'm looking for the excitement on people's faces. We have worked what I think Ms. Beckton about five or six years. It's, we've been working uh, on this project uh, uh, a while, and I think people are ready to see it. People are now uh, always have been interested in history as 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 a culture, but to bring something like this to Newburn, uh, finally, a lot of people been looking uh, looking at it. They've been talking about it for years on just about every committee I have ever sat on, and so it's just good to see it finally uh, coming to uh, fruition. And people are going to be surprised at what they see on the signs and then the trail. Uh, itself and you know the committee has done an amazing um, job to keep a committee uh, together uh, that long and to do that type uh, that type of work so I, I think um, I'm just you know just the excitement of everybody. We're, we're not talking about you know little signs you know up on a, on a post. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Well, it's, I mean, it's a trail. I mean, we've seen the signs. If you go to the battlefield uh, out there, that are uh, very, very similar. And then the city has some more signs like it. I think they're um, at, at um, Union Point Park where they, they have some signs there about, about that uh, size. So you, you're gonna be able to see them and, and read them very well. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah, talking about like 30 by 24 on yeah. post. Mm -hmm. um, so we have about two that will have three sides, and then we mm -hmm. have the others will be two sides. You can mm -hmm. find information, historic information on each one of those sides, and it comes to a total of 16 in all. But it yes. will vary in depth and interesting information that I yes. know a lot of people will be surprised to read about, and <laughs> others will be delighted to finally see that that's a mm -hmm. part of history that is very rich in New Bern, but however, has not been presented, but now it's out there for everybody to share in that history that has um, not been presented yet. So mm -hmm. we're, we're very excited about it. The signs are beautiful. They are. 
getting them in place soon. And by next Friday, I'm sorry, the next Saturday, Juneteenth, it will happen. Uh, I'd like to go on and mention the entire committee. Uh, that includes Susan Cook, Bernard mm -hmm. George, Lynn Harrell, Teresa Lee, Nelson McDaniel, John Miller, Mary Peterkin, Ethel Staten, and Mr. Jeff Ruggeri. So we, we've had an awesome committee yes. and a lot of hard and fun work has gone into this. So we're very excited yeah. about it. And also John Wood. I want to mention John Wood's name as well. And I, hope I haven't left out him? anybody, but it's, it's been the committee and help from so, so many. Mm -hmm. If I left out anyone, I am truly sorry, but your help <laughs> really needed and appreciated, and we are truly grateful yeah. and thankful for this opportunity. Right, you want to do folks, don't you? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say to the dedication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say it again. You want to invite go. folks to the dedication. You want to tell them where and when, so they can join us and and, and uh, enjoy these amazing signs. Yeah, I'll let Miss Beck can tell you that because actually we're working on we're working on the program and we just sent her uh, some corrections. So she's been working on it a very long, long time. So she knows it like the back of her back of her hand. And I've been to the spot several, uh, in yesterday. addition to having skated there during the, during Christmas as a child on Roundtree Street. But the uh, dedication will take place on the corner of Roundtree and Queen Street here in New Bern. You can't miss it. It's right where the, there is a mural on the wall at the building, the establishment there, and it will be in that spot. You cannot miss it. Right oh, on the just after you pass Prima Group. And oh. Roundtree Street is part of Five Points. Yeah, oh, that is yeah. where can, can y'all tell us where the signs are going to be located after they're dedicated, or is that part of the, is it a, a kind of a surprise? It, that you are unveil the dedication. <laughs> well, some of the sign you'll be able to see a map, a small map will be included on the actual program that will mm -hmm. okay. uh, have a, a mapping out of it. The door come also as you kind of search it out along the way Two and going on that. streets mm -hmm. that perhaps you've never traversed before, and then some yeah. with which you are very familiar because they are on some of the main thoroughfares uh, of the city. But yeah, and there'll be one be right map around on, too. On, on the actual program oh, that'll give you an yeah. idea of the location. Okay. We'll have uh, a couple of volunteers available to maybe get you started in the right direction. But there's other th there will be other things going on that day as well. In fact, after that ceremony, I believe a parade might be coming through. But we okay. are excited about the dedication right there on the corner of Round Street and Queen Street. And that's at 10 o'clock on Saturday? 10 o'clock, 8 a.m. 10 o'clock, 8 a.m. Up and ready. <laughs> so we, we're, we're really very excited about it. And we believe and know that the city of New Bern is, is well, meaning the citizens of the city of New Bern are anticipating that. I, I know it, uh, I share it wherever I am. And uh, it's something we've been talking about a long time. And you uh, have go ahead. No, you go ahead, Kathy. I was going to say, the images I've seen are, are really neat because not only are there pieces of history, but, but people and individuals. In the, Abraham Galloway, I just, I, he has mm -hmm. such a fascinating story. And, and a, lot of, a lot of other folks, uh, you know, the, they're going to be a neat collection of science, not only the history, mm -hmm. the stories, but the individuals yes. that help, help make New Bern, New Bern. Yeah, I know, in fact, uh, the location at the corner of Round Tree and Queen Street. It used to uh, be the location where one of the people who were mentioned in one of the signs, Mr. Frank Pollock, he owned several stores in the Negro community. Mm -hmm. I remember them yep. as a child growing up. But at one point he had a store, if not in that exact location, right next door, very close to it. And he will be one of the people featured in one of the panels that will be appearing. Uh, about some of the different stores that he had in that community during that time. So I'm oh really excited about it. There are other names uh, that some people perhaps may, and West Street, very historic for us. Um, there, that was the center of education is what we call it. 
because there we ended up having a, a hospital, Good Shepherd. After Good Shepherd, mm -hmm. we got the uh, Colored Library. But even before Good Shepherd and the Colored Library, we had West Street Elementary School mm -hmm. located on West Street. And, and down further from that, near Cypress Street, we also had another school that existed that a lot of people didn't know anything about. So when you re read about Mr. Weeks and others, you see about other schools that existed for us as well. So we're excited. That, wow, that's just amazing. And, and this year, the yes. Juneteenth of New Bern, um, the whole the, the group of people that have come together uh, to for all the different events and um, can I share a screen about Juneteenth if you all want to say anything? Uh, Talina it was Talina Massey. Um, she was going to join us today, and something must have come up. But um, do you all mind if we we bring that up and and just run do a rundown of events? That's a good idea. Do? Sound good. Sound yeah. like a great idea. That's if I if if I, if I follow the dedication, that'll be great. Great tie in. If I can figure it out, let's see where is it at. <laughs> I, I think, there I think we you go. can. Oh, there, there you go. go. All right. Yeah, I, I'm not a big screen sharer, but this is just a <laughs> wow. This is the lineup. So, oh, the the Crockett Miller Slave Quarters was on the History Quest, and that was such a hit. People loved going to see that, and the folks from the James City Historical Society were doing a tour. And that's well worth your time to go see. Yeah, yeah. and then Art Walk, they're mm -hmm. creating Arts Council, and there's going to be uh, Sankofa, the musical review, and that's at the Civic Theater. Um, and that's going to be with the African American Heritage and Cultural Center. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. yes, yes. We're looking forward to that too. Yeah. Wow. It, I think then, we get a sneak preview this evening. <laughs> That's right. right. Yep. The African American Heritage Culture Center, yes. Mm -hmm. Working along uh, with the theater and the June 19th committee. They've done an awesome job bringing this together. Gosh, just, then we have a prayer wonderful. and fellowship on the 13th. And yeah. they're going to kick off with a podcast on the 14th. My gosh, every day. And that's going to be us with, with the podcast. With That is. All right. Yeah. 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 And yes. the, just so people, if people are listening on the radio on June 13th, uh, the prayer and fellowship is at 10 a.m. at Trinity uh, Chapel AME Zion Church um, at Broad Street. And the podcast will be on New Bern Now NC Facebook page. And that's with Project Restore at 7 p.m. on the 14th. On the 15th is Fitness with Friends in the Park with Fit Friends on Deck and K-Zone Fitness at Fort Totten Park from 6 to 8 p.m. And the 16th, we have HBCU Day. I don't know HBCU. Anybody? So black universities. Okay. <laughs> All right. Black colleges and universities. Okay, got it. Okay. And then the 17th, we have a lecture at Tryon Palace. That's cool. African American Lecture Series. Um, and I'm trying to give information here and I can't read fast enough. <laughs> uh, um, talk to Crystal Eldred there. Okay. Yeah, and on the 18th is a premier rooftop celebration uh, and that's uh, at Oliver and Cheeks Rooftop mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. by, and that's by, uh, the Young Urban Professionals of Eastern North Carolina. And then the Juneteenth Festival is at 10 a.m. with the Historical Signs dedication at 11 a.m. Walking Parade, uh, Festival, Five Points Community, all kinds of stuff going on until I think eight o'clock. And then the 20th uh, is a prayer walk, gospel music programs. and. Mappa, uh, Simmons, and Broad Street. If, if for all the details, check out JuneteenthOfNewBurn.com, and uh, and at, please reach out and ask any specific questions because you know this is about our our community. Like 
us together, coming together to learn about each other. And, and it, it just so exciting to see the, the expansion. I mean, I, I remember, well, you all, you all remember when it, you know, first started, uh, what, six years ago, was it six years ago when they, they started, uh, doing the, a couple of the celebrations, but this is just every single day. There's something, is that, is that right? Or am I wrong on that? I don't know, no, Wendy. No comment? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm aware of the last two years, definitely, no. that they have planned uh, different events through the week leading into Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Definitely of last year and the year before, I know, uh, I think this was in, oh, 18 or 19, 19, the uh, African American Heritage Culture Center mm -hmm. had held one of the events in the old Fireman Museum which was another great yeah so but I, I remember hearing about some the Juneteenth something was going on in New Bern just little tiny things here and there over Craven the Arts, last... the Craven Arts Council as well participated mm -hmm. in that those years too it was something every day and we yeah. are certainly full up this year which is great great to see such a full calendar lots of things for people to enjoy and learn from Yes, thank you. Thank you. We, thank we talked you. with our with our last guest, we talked about all the people coming to New Bern and how the real estate market's hopping and everybody wants to move here. And and when you that look at true. what it what it means to live in New Bern, you know, it's it's nice to have lots of different things of what that means. And just um, you know, New Bern is such a great place of people coming together and embracing history and bringing light to things that, that you know haven't been um on the forefront before. So what a, what a great way to, to show people coming to our community that, you know, New Bern is, is uh, a place that embraces all kinds of folks and history and, and cultural events. Um, gosh, we need more of this all the time, all the time. So thank you all for what you're doing to, to help bring this to light. People that come to New Bern and look at all these historical signs, they ought to look at all these signs, shouldn't they? And all these trails and, and learn about what this place really is. So thank you all for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful seeing you both. And is there anything to see you? Is there Y'all anything else? Care. Is that good? We're good. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have bye, a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Right. It's exciting. To see wow. It is. It's really cool. It's. I mean, and mm -hmm. you get some. Um, you know, just fantastic dynamic leaders that. They grab a hold of something like that and, and really make things happen and, and change the landscape of our town. I mean, it's just wonderful. It's great to see that. It was, yeah, it is. To see Angelina's uh, video with all the rehearsal of the Sankofa things was really neat to look at. I have not seen that yet. I will. Um, I'm sure that's on Facebook for New Pacific Theater. I'll check that out. Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And are we here? We need to get your winner, don't we? Yeah, we need a winner, winner. So the question is, where is the city of New Bern's community garden? Where is it located? The address, put the address in here and you'll get, you may be the only one to guess and win a gift certificate to one of the favorite local businesses, one of many. So we'll, we'll give the that initials, a minute. The initials are Mitchell's Hardware, right, Kevin? <laughs> That's Mitchell's my line. Hardware. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Hardware. Okay. okay. Um, just real quick, let's just talk about a couple other things that are, okay. are happening. We, we just got the Knights of Columbus uh, uh, yard sale. That's a that's always a, a favorite, and that's at on the tenth through the twelfth. Actually, that's today, right? Wow. Yep. Today's through the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's going to be from eight to twelve at uh, the Knights of Columbus, eleven twenty-five. Pine Tree Drive. Okay, and tomorrow the 11th, the Art Walks, uh, a special Juneteenth Art Walk, that's eight or five to eight at Bank of the Arts, presented by the Craven Arts Council and Gallery. So that's an also, exciting thing. Also tomorrow night, Footloose on the News, summer concert series with Joe Brown and the band, 6.30 at Union Point Park, presented by Newburn Parks and Recreation. All right, and on the 12th, the Pet Expo at 9 a.m. at Creekside Park. Oh, dogs and cats, gotta go. Yeah, and that's with uh, 
He got to check out the canine unit, the Craven, uh, oh. the sheriff canine unit. There's going to be adoptions, vendors, food trucks. So that's going to be a fun, fun afternoon. Um, so, all right. Um, yeah. Also on uh, Saturday, the 12th, stuff the truck at Greenbrier, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, Habitat for Humanity is going to have their truck there. So stuff it with stuff that you that you don't want, but there's still cool stuff that they can make use of. And the Sankofa Musical Review tomorrow night, Saturday night and Sunday. Um, the nightly shows Friday and Saturday are 7.30 and Sunday is 2 o'clock. That is at New Bern Civic Theater. You can get tickets online, newbernsivictheater.org or the box office or the door. Okay. Also on the 12th, Lewis and Clark are back. The Lewis and Clark Expedition. They're doing Elvis and Dolly. That is going to be so much fun. That's at 7.30 <laughs> Masonic Theater. So check them yeah. out. And that's the first show at the Masonic Theater. So congratulations to the Masonic yeah. Theater for opening up. That's opening wonderful. up and for Vaughn and Abby to be the first ones yeah. in there. That's yeah. right. So All right. And then, they're also having rehearse, they're having practices there. They're doing Steel Magnolias coming in July. So watch for that as well okay. at Rivertown. Good. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And uh, we already covered the other two yep. during Juneteenth. So uh, check out the Newburn Farmers Market every Saturday from 8 to 2 p.m. And for all the, the, the community calendar, we have one on, on our uh, website, newburnnow.com. Um, and Rich isn't here, but is anyone going day tripping to go see the 63rd annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament in Moorhead? That's a big deal. That's it's a big deal. Down. I did hear that there are some celebrity uh, folks that have registered again this year. Really? The rumor is that Michael Jordan's coming back. So, Get out. Uh, he's going to be fishing in again. Last time we pulled in a fish that was, I think, around 400 pounds, it was originally in third place he didn't end up placing i don't believe but he's back again so uh yeah you know, there may be day tripping just to go go see some of your favorite uh favorite sports stars i hear maybe Ooh, curtis wow. strange is, is involved as well so yeah it's kind of a cool thing isn't it and people are glad to do it after after last year after not. That's, that's always exciting yeah. that is yeah. so cool and, and that's from june 10th to the 22nd and for all the details visit the big rock.com yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, a. Any it. oh, no one's gonna guess the yes. question for. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. So let's give the answer. The answer is George. Do you know where? It, do you guys know where it is? The community. I community only know that it's on your on National your Avenue page. somewhere. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. I'm out National Avenue. I think National too. Yeah. It's four hundred Cypress Street. Cypress Street. It's right off of George Street. So that's okay. National Ave is George Street. Okay. Right, right. See, so you, if you're leaving town, make mm -hmm. a right on Cypress and it's right there on the left hand side. Okay, so. I'll go look. Because cool. I know you're going to get a plant yeah. and plant good stuff. Yeah. I or, am. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to plant right. a plum tree. That's so wild. That's and, uh, so cool. I've never heard of anything like I, that. I ate a purple plum and then I ate a yellow green plum. And they, <laughs> they were two different, completely different plums and they were both perfectly ripe. Off the same tree. So weird. Off yep. the same tree. Yeah. And you didn't turn into a plum. So that's no, but I ate enough plums. I should have. What a good boy am I. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we want to uh, remind the class of 2021 high school graduates if they're going to plan to attend a North Carolina Community College, you may be eligible to receive up to $2,800 a year for a total of two years for tuition and fees. So check them out in ccommunitycolleges.edu. Yeah, and, that's and how about just another round of applause for all those graduates because how about yeah. it's the season for that. We got a lot of kids done a lot of good work and a lot of parents oh, that have helped them do it. So good job, everybody. Awesome. Right. Yes. And that's the long leaf uh, grant. So the North Carolina long leaf grant education grant. So, okay. All right. Well, all right. Is that a, is that a is wrap? It, uh, George? Uh, that's a wrap folks. <laughs> Miss you rich. <laughs> okay. We'll see y'all uh, we'll in a week. All right. Send us well, your actually, Wendy, stories. When's your special one? Is it Monday that you have a special podcast with? with you spraying, you're spraying that on me. It's the, yes, I think 14th. that's Monday. It's the 14th. Yeah. The 14th is 14th. 7 p.m. Okay. 
come back and, and listen to that special uh, Juneteenth one. Yes. Yeah. And in the meantime, send us your announcements, uh, any information. We've got all kinds of stuff going on on New Bern now, our website. Oh, real quick, the magazine, we, we were going to launch in July, but we're in the process of a new hire and at the administrative assistant, the first one ever for New Bern now. So I'm really excited. And so we've, I've pushed that deadline back to August. So please send us your information. If you wanna be an advertiser and support what we're doing, um, let me know the deadline for that is July 15th. And my number is 259-6853 or email info at newburnnow.com. Before we leave, Wendy, we gotta give, we gotta recognize the artwork behind you. I can tell that that one on the left is a nod to the Big Rock tournament. It says, if the keys are missing, I've gone fishing. So Wendy will be out there <laughs> with Michael Jordan catching that big fish if those keys are missing. <laughs> is that what yeah, that says? That's <laughs> a big fish I'm gonna catch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, all right. But I, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a great weekend. And thank you for joining us, everyone. Thanks for everyone for watching and and cue Come up back the music. Next week. There you go. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. See, See you later. Have a great day. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Happy. Bye bye. Bye bye.